I'm Natalie Del Conte, and you're getting reloaded. Let us rejoice, the iPhone has been emancipated. As expected, Apple did announce the software developer's kit for the iPhone, and I must admit, it is a game changer. Apple is calling this iPhone 2.0. It means that the iPhone will now be a semi-open system where anyone can design applications that users can choose to use as they please with a certain number of limitations. The applications will start to be available in June through a new button on the iPhone called the App Store. Users can browse and buy applications in the same way they buy music through the iTunes Store on the iPhone or the iPod Touch right now. Except for free applications, of course. Those you won't have to buy, quite obviously, but you'll still get them through the App Store. The SDK is available today, although the website was not loading for us when we tried because it was so flooded. No surprise there. Developers who can get into the site, however, can run the iPhone simulator on their Macs. If you're interested in developing applications, you can join the developer program for $99. This will give you access to iPhone code for testing before it's released, as well as technical support. The Enterprise Developers Program is $299. That's right, I said Enterprise. The iPhone wants to be taken seriously in the business world now. Apple announced full support for enterprise features such as Microsoft Exchange Active Sync, which would provide secure over-the-air push email, contacts, and calendars. There will also be a remote wipe feature, which will erase everything on your iPhone remotely if you lose it or if it's stolen. There's also a Cisco VPN access so that you can get to your private corporate networks. This means I don't have to go to Safari and log into webmail to get my CNET email anymore. Hallelujah! This is a lot of news for the iPhone, and like I said, it changes the game. It means that the iPhone is essentially a mini computer now. You can do what you want with it in terms of applications, and you can do real work on it now, whereas before, no respectable CIO would really take it seriously. I don't mean to gush, but I'm not the only one who thinks that this makes the iPhone a formidable product. We asked our senior editor of mobile devices, Kent German, what he thinks of this. This is significant because uh, these apps that you'll see actually take full advantage of the iPhone's accelerometer and its touchscreen. So really use the phone in all ways to use these. Also, Apple is the one that's going to be the portal for these. They're actually producing them. They're putting them out there. Usually people go through the carriers to get their applications and any features they put on the phone. But the manufacturer's doing this, which is really uh, a different thing than usual. I almost forgot the coolest part, which is VoIP. Apple says that VoIP applications will be allowed, but only over Wi-Fi and not over your cellular connection. Surely AT&T thwarted that plan if it ever was spoken aloud. I, for one, am excited to see what the development community can really do with this. It will only be the PG developers that will benefit from this, though. Apple will have to approve all applications, and it says it will not let through any that crash the network or have anything to do with porn. Sorry. You can read more of the nitty-gritty of this announcement, as well as see our coverage of the press event at news.com. Thanks for tuning in to this special iPhone-related episode. I'm Natalie Del Conte with CNET TV, and you've just been loaded.